So fusion power, harnessing the process which powers the sun, but to generate electricity here on Earth. First light fusion, we have a new method for what's called inertial fusion. And the heart of inertial fusion is the fuel pellet. It's this tiny object, a millimeter in size, filled with a tiny drop of fusion fuel. And the way that you make inertial fusion work is you have to implode the fuel pellet at very high velocity. Basically, you squash it really, really quickly. And as you squash it, you compress the fuel and you heat it up. Now, nature doesn't want to let you heat it up. There's loads of processes which take energy away from the fuel as the fuel pellet implodes. And this is what sets the velocity. This is how inertial fusion works. You overpower all of those processes with just raw kinetic energy. So what you have with this fuel pellet when it implodes is you have a state of matter that is hotter than the center of the sun, and it's denser than lead. And you can burn 20, 30, 40, 50 percent of the fuel, the fusion fuel. Each one of these, even though it's only a millimeter in size, each one can release enough energy to power the average UK home for nearly two years. So it's incredible energy density. How do you implode the fuel pellet? Right, that's the question. So the established way of doing this is you use a laser. And that's great uh, in one sense, because if you take the right laser and the right fuel pellet, you shine the laser on the fuel pellet, and it just implodes straight away at the right velocity. Excellent. The problem with the laser is the cost. And the cost today is far, far too high for cost-competitive power production. And this is where First Light comes in. We have a new approach. We don't use a laser. We use a high-velocity projectile instead of the laser, which is a much lower-cost system. So this is a like-for-like -like physics basis comparison. Uh, this is the cheapest laser architecture that we know of for inertial fusion versus our projectile approach. So it's a big difference. But there's also another advantage of projectile fusion, which is that it's a much simpler geometry. And to make sense of that, you need to understand that it's not one laser. So the biggest inertial fusion project in the world, the National Ignition Facility, um, is actually 192 separate laser beams. What that means in a power plant is you have to build something like the thing on the, on the left there. The, the reaction chamber in the center of the plant is this incredibly complicated thing, which is going to be hard to engineer. So we use one projectile, which comes from one side only, straight down from above. So we've got to do the thing on, on the right here, which is much simpler. That unlocks that simpler geometry. That unlocks a very different approach to the power plant, uh, one which solves the three big uh, engineering challenges of fusion. Uh, so we use something called um, a liquid first wall, and we have lots of brilliant videos and animations which I didn't have time to <laughs> put in this presentation. So you can go to our website and you can see some lovely animations of how that works. Basically, we can put the, the coolant, which is going to take away the energy, we can put that inside the reaction chamber instead of outside. And all of the energy, all of the harsh conditions that you get from the fusion energy release, the liquid absorbs and takes all that. Uh, instead of the, the structural materials. So we can solve these three big challenges. Um, now, there's a, there's a problem, though, with projectile fusion, and it's to do with getting to that required implosion velocity. The reasonable velocities that you can get with a reasonable projectile are tens of kilometers per second, and not the hundreds of kilometers per second that you need in that fuel uh, pellet implosion. So First Light's key technology is something we call the amplifier, and it does what it says on the tin. It goes between the projectile and the fuel pellet, and it boosts the velocity, it amplifies the velocity, it takes the tens of kilometers per second from the projectile, and it turns it into the hundreds for the implosion. And I'm going to do something quite risky, and I'm going to attempt to illustrate that for you on stage with these. So first, uh, I'm going to go over here, because I don't want to break this TV. So first, the basketball by itself. All right, not very exciting. Then the tiny football. Not very exciting. But if we do both together in just the right way, you get, a, you get a transfer of energy from the big, heavy, slow thing into the small, light thing, and it ends up going much faster as a result. So this is the core of our process, the core of our technology. We've just crossed the major physics milestone. We've demonstrated fusion with this approach for the first time, and we're now designing our next device, which will be a game demonstrator. Thank you.